Most of the upper half of New Hampshire is defined as the White Mountains, but that tells one very little. Yes, there are mountains here, but that also implies the presence of valleys and rivers and towns and all of the other pieces of a complex geography. Everyone knows about the Presidential Range because of Mount Washington, but there are other ranges in the Whites. The Sandwich Range defines the southern face of the mountains. Then there's the Franconia Range, which includes mountains such as Lafayette and Lincoln. And to the north and south, there are all the foothills and valleys that lead up into the mountains. Dividing the ranges, one finds the notches. These deep valleys provide the passes between the various mountain regions. From earliest times, they were the natural roads that provided connections between the towns of Upper New Hampshire and Vermont and the seacoast capitals at Portsmouth and Boston. The highest of these notches is Pinkham Notch below Mount Washington. This is where most hikers and motorists start their ascent of the presidentials. The next notch to the west is Crawford Notch, which in the last century was the site of the most tourist development in the region. Crawford Notch is probably the most scenic of the notches, and any visitor should look for the Eisenhower Wayside for one of the most dramatic views around. Finally, there is Franconia Notch, with its old man of the mountains and well scenic wonders. This notch has drawn tourists for over 200 years. Today, the state park at Franconia Notch still draws hordes of visitors. Charles Witten has been helping folks to discover the area for the last 20 years. People have been coming to Franconia Notch State Park way before it was a state park in the 1800s. There were many large hotels. Uh, people came to see the old man. They basically came just for the natural beauty. So every day I drive through the notch and see the old man, and I look at the old man's face every day. It's just a lovely place. Some of the things a visitor should see in Franconia Notch State Park are the flume. Flume is a large natural gorge, uh, covered bridges, waterfalls, views of mountains, a nice walking path. A walking trail involves a nice gravel graded trail. You begin at the Flume Vista Center, walk downhill to a large covered bridge. One of the prettier covered bridges, I think, in the state of New Hampshire. Lovely, lovely covered bridge built in the 1800s. You walk across the Pemigewasset River, which in Nabinac meant rapidly flowing water. You walk uphill through a narrow, narrow natural gorge with a boardwalk through it. You're walking right on top of the stream. At the top of the gorge, there's a waterfall. From the top of the gorge, you walk through a nice hardwood forest down to the Sentinel Pine Bridge. The Sentinel Pine Bridge is constructed on a large pine tree that was blown down in the 1938 hurricane, one of the few hurricanes, or actually the only hurricane that ever came inland in the state of New Hampshire. Just a lovely walk through woods. As you proceed up the notch, the next stopping point would be the basin. The basin is a large pothole in the river. Walk into the basin, lots of nice little waterfalls, and the basin itself being a big pothole that you can stand right near. The pothole was ground right into the basin of the river and the granite by the water action. A little further north point, the old man being a large rock natural profile on the face of the cliff, something that people have been coming to see since the early 1800s. Every moment in Franconia Notch is different than the moment before. Days like today, you have the wind and snow. There's a mystique about it. It's something that's brought people here since before the turn of the century. It's something you just have to experience yourself. In New Hampshire's long history as a place of resort, there's been a never-ending search for more creative ways to separate the visitors from their money. 
legacy of commercial attractions is one of the keys to the region's history. At first, the tourist business was entirely based on providing access to the region's natural wonders. The earliest walking trails up Mount Washington were commercial enterprise, as were the later carriage road, the Coggill Way, and the steamships on Lake Winnipesaukee, all providing access to the wilderness. But as times progressed, city visitors to the area started to demand something more than natural wonders. They wanted entertainment. Now, of course, not everyone up here was excited by those demands. Well, anybody coming in this area, if they're in a hurry, they're in the wrong place. Uh, that's what I always tell them. And if they want things the same as what they had them back in New York or Massachusetts, why, that's the place to go, is back to New York or Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, I've told a good many that and made some friends and some not so friendly. <laughs> However, most people need to make some kind of a living in this beautiful but harsh environment. And many of them set about building a tourism industry to meet the visitor demand. At first, anything could be an entertainment. For instance, in the 19th century in Crawford Notch, the Wiley family was crushed in a gruesome killer avalanche. The site of their house soon became a tourist attraction. It still is. And there are historical oddities to be found. Down in Moltenboro, the Moltenboro Country Store purports to be one of the oldest operating stores in the country. In fact, as you drive along the highways and byways of New Hampshire, you're struck with the constancy of commercial attractions. It's easy to tell you're in vacation country by the profusion of miniature golf courses and the ever-popular water slides. Of course, New Hampshire's primary attraction continues to be its geography. The outdoors attracts a hardy breed that comes to tramp the mountain trails. But not all visitors are quite so adventuresome. Let's say that many of us desire to answer the call of the wild at a civilized pace. And the region's famous sites cater to that desire. The rugged flume area in Franconia Notch is perhaps the best known commercial attraction. But there are other mini natural parks to explore at places like the Lost River and the Polar Caves. Polar Caves is a network of granite boulder glacial caves burrowing within and down a mountainside just outside Plymouth. The name Polar Caves derives from the way the rocks hold the winter's cold even in the warmth of summer. Visitors discover these caves along a series of wooden walkways that climb the cliff face. It's sometimes amusing to watch people trying to enter the caves with names like Fat Man's Misery and The Lemon Squeeze. But mostly, this is an easy, kid-friendly, non-aerobic way to discover geologic oddities in the White Mountains. Man-made commercial attractions abound in the region, and amusement and theme parks can be found along all the roads. There are story-based theme parks and historical theme parks. Some have been around long enough to be considered historical landmarks in their own right. Clark's Trading Post down in Woodstock has been here for almost three quarters of a century. And every visitor to the White Mountains usually gets a view of Murray Clark's trained bears. I think someone else should do the hard work. I should take it easy. Not here. Up in Jefferson, north of the Notches, there's another almost historic attraction. It's Santa's Village. One of the region's oldest family theme parks, it was started as a place where little children could come to sit on Santa's lap in the off-season, peek in Santa's workshop, and pet a reindeer. Today, that simple concept has grown into a full-fledged amusement park with a Christmas theme. Here, visitors can ride on Yule logs for the roller coaster and mount reindeer on the carousel. And after all that, the children can even talk to Rudolph. We went on a roller coaster. Wow, the roller coaster is my favorite ride. We went on a... And your picture's on it. It is. It's named after me. Up here, the term commercial attraction can mean a lot of different things. Conway, once famous as a fertile Eden in the shadow of Mount Washington, now provides a fertile field of shopping attractions. The traffic jam between Conway and North Conway has even become legendary. But there's one way of making that trip in a pleasurable style. That's to take a ride on the Conway Scenic Railway. Historic railroads are part of a common heritage in New Hampshire. It all harkens back to the days when a network of railroads was used to clear timber out of the White Mountain forests. 
Those days are long gone, and yet the romance of the rails lives on. Of course, there's the cog railway, it's unique. But there are more. There are railways along the lakes, and there are railways near the traffic. They're part of amusement parks. The most historic of these railroads is to be found up in Conway. Here at the classic old Victorian station, you can find the Conway Scenic Railway. For the present, this old steam train travels merely between Conway and North Conway. But soon, the train will be traversing the historic old tracks up into Crawford Notch. This is a great way to relive the old days of steam trains and a simpler, more rhythmic way of travel.